So I'm going to go into Dynamics 365. For those of you who are on AX 2012, you'll notice that Dynamics 365 is a web-based client. You no longer need to RDP into anywhere or open up a separate program. It is simply go open up your web browser, whichever one you like, go to a certain link, put in your username and login, and you're on the system. Note that Microsoft has released a new multi-factor authentication. So now when you log in, you either have to put in a code that gets texted to you. So those features are available now as well. And so that's something to be cognizant of. So what you see on my screen is the main page for Dynamics 365. What you see over here are called workspaces. Workspaces are amalgamations of links and KPIs and other areas that would be useful to you when you're doing a specific task. All these workspaces are configurable to each individual user. You'll notice that I have a number of them on my screen. This is because I'm a system administrator. Your security role will dictate which of these workspaces you have access to. And from there, you'll be able to do whatever it is that you do on your day-to-day -day basis. So let's get into some of the new features. We're gonna start with a small one, an appetizer, if you will. And this one exists inside the general ledger module. So within the general ledger module, we have what's known as the global general journal. This is a feature that's gonna be beneficial to you if you are a multi-legal entity organization. If you're a single legal entity organization, this will not be quite so useful. But if you are multi-legal entity, what this screen allows you to do is it allows you to see all your journals that cross legal entities. So you can see here, unlike most screens in either AX2012 or Dynamics 365, you have a company column. So you can see journals that were created in other legal entities all in one place. When you go to create a new one, the first thing you do is you pick an originating company. So you can see that I have by default USMF, but I can choose any of these. And depending on which one you choose, you will have access to a different list. So you see all your daily or your periodic general journals when you hit this drop down. If I change this to USSI or any other legal entity for say, you'll see that my list of options changes because this is now specific to the legal entity that you have selected. You of course will only have access to pick in the drop down the legal entities that you have been given security to. You won't be able to pick ones that you don't have that ability. So let me go ahead and pick my usual USMF general journal. One of the things you'll notice is that the batch number comes from the number sequence set up in your specific legal entity. So you can see while we have the five digit one for the USMF, in my Chinese company, you have the prefix. In my Russian company, you have the prefix. So the batch number along with the voucher number are determined based on what your originating company is. And then once you're in here, you can go to lines and you can see that you have your company and your offset company within your grid. So I can go in and I'm gonna say, maybe I just transfer some petty cash from one legal entity to another. And I'll go into petty cash here as well. And what I'll do is actually, sorry, I forgot, I have to change that. And now I choose my petty cash account. And so you can see now I have a situation where USMF is giving $100 to my USSI company. And then I just have to get this approved and thankfully I'm an approver, but now everything is the same. So the only advantage is, is that you get to see all your global entries all in one screen. So I go ahead and I post this and now everything is just like it used to be. We'll use the intercompany accounting functionality. If I look at the voucher, you'll see I have my do to do from, somebody has to change her. So that's just one of the new features that can generally be fairly useful.